I wanted to tackle today um, the advances in hearing loss and I almost don't have to read anything. <laughs> I'll probably find a, a page where you can read a little bit more about it. Uh, but you know, in my day when I started with hearing aids and I don't want to date myself. <laughs> so without dating myself, let's get started. Anyhow, you know, in my day, there were simple tools in the hearing aids that we, you know, that are still being used, but also um, they're increasing other tools in the hearing aids, which is incredible. You know, we're advancing pretty quickly in different types of hearing aids and you know, even the audiologists back in the day, well, back in the day, they were still, you know, they do a lot of counseling these days in terms of difficulties with couples and family interaction and that one person who has um, hearing loss. So they are able to work with that. Um, they also work a lot with balance now, which I think way back in the day, they didn't do any of that. That was on the table at the doctor's office to work with. So there was, there's a lot going on in ideology and a lot more on the table for the ideologists to work with. And they've studied a lot more about hearing and there's a lot more information as to how our hearing works. Now, one of the things that um, the hearing aids in terms of technology, uh, there's like big construction going on in front of me on the, on the property right across from me. And there are tractors going back and forth and they're digging up the ground and you don't hear it. You don't hear it because my microphone is blocking those sounds. And our hearing aids do almost the same thing. It blocks out sounds around us that we're not interested in and focuses on the person in front of us. So, you know, uh, it, and that is great technology. Way back in the day, that didn't exist. <laughs> so we had to hear everything. You know, and our hearing aids were analog. And so they were very uh, more simplistic uh, today, they're digital across the board. I think analog hearing aids are very hard to come across. And so today, it's all digital. It all has to do with computer chips and how those computer chips, you know, process sound around you at an incredible speed so you can hear better. So that's one of the advances, and that's going to continue to advance as they learn what these computer chips can do for you and for me. Well, me is a little different, but <laughs> I have a bunch of computer chips. <laughs> but we'll talk about cochlear implants and down the road. <laughs> but now we're talking about Bluetooth and they're working on it uh, to make sure all that works. They're talking about, um, what do you call it? Let me uh, get the name here in my head. Um, T coils, and that that's going to go away, and I, I I don't think so because, you know, even with all these advances, what increases is the cost. <laughs> so, T coils are very very inexpensive. It's just a little copper wire that picks up a signal from a phone. Uh, T coils are very inexpensive, and they also pick up. Um, sound from you know from another copper wire if it's installed and connected to a speaker system it will also like in churches and theaters uh, they will also um, install uh, a system in which it's just a flat uh, copper wire that will install it all the way around the theater 
and then they'll plug it into the microphone system and you will be able to receive that sound. Now, that is old technology, they might say, but it's the cheapest. <laughs> it's very cheap, folks. And it helps us here. We get the sound, you know, in crisp, crisp, crispy, clear. <laughs> and it just helps us. Now, Bluetooth can also be used now, but I don't know where we're at with that technology. We're beginning to use it and beginning to install it in various places, whether it's Bluetooth or whether it is a T coil, um, you know, technology. A one is more expensive than the other. The Bluetooth is more expensive to install and to prepare for people who don't hear as well. So we also can stream now uh, we can stream phone calls, we can stream videos, we can, do, we, can do, we can stream so many things now. And we can stream, you know, TV also, but that requires some extra equipment, which is still a little bit expensive. So, again, the T-coil and the, the, the equipment that goes with the T-coil is much, uh, much less expensive than the Bluetooth and the streaming. So that's where we're at. It just, it has to do with cost and how fast we can go <laughs> with hearing aids. You know, we have advanced so much in the design of hearing aids as well. And, you know, we have the, we used to have just the, the box. It used to be a box and we used to have something behind our ear and we would have to hear from that box. And that box is gone. <laughs> Although with the cochlear implants, it's a different story, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, and the hearing aids have all different kinds of shapes now. They have in the air and they have, you know, completely in the air and they have behind the ear and all these different uh, shapes and styles for for the hearing aid and that is you know incredible back in my day they had some of that um but you know not not as good as it is today we have allergies people with allergies so i was one of them and we had to find ear molds that were uh, hypoallergenic so i wouldn't break out <laughs> And end up with an infection because I was constantly ending up with infections and it was just a mess. So, you know, we have figured out materials that are hypoallergenic. And so how incredible is that? You know, what kind of hearing aid do you have in your ear right now? Now, as I said before, the smaller the hearing aid, and the more invisible the hearing aid, the less they're able to put in the hearing aid uh, for you to enjoy all this new technology that's coming out. So that's something to, there's drawbacks and there's advantages. One advantage is that nobody sees your hearing aid. The other thing is that you don't get the technology that's out today. So that is something to consider um, in terms of in terms of, you know, what you need for hearing. You know, what you need for hearing. And, you know, I can stream videos. I don't have to sit there and watch it. I can just put on a video and just walk around my room and just listen to the story without having to, to look at the, the video. Since when? <laughs> that is incredible. So, and I don't have to do anything to my mechanisms. It does it all on its own. So that's another type of technology that's come up that the hearing aids are smarter. They're smart hearing aids. And so they adjust and they change uh, depending on your need at that moment. So you don't have to fool around with the different buttons and things like that. We used to have a couple of different buttons to change programs and now we don't have to do that. It changes on its own. <laughs> so they're like little tiny robots now. <laughs> we hear with robots. 
But you know that is the advances. If we if we stop to think about how far we've come with hearing aids, it's just mind blowing. It's just incredibly mind blowing. So, but however, that puts more more things and more things for the audiologist to learn. So they're having to dig and learn more about technology and how these chips work and how they don't work and how to educate you on what your hearing aid actually does. Now some older audiologists who have been in the field for a long time struggle, you know, to catch up with all this technology that's coming out. What is it called? How do I educate my patient? You know, it's, it's not easy. It is not easy. So um, the younger audiologists, they, it's like drinking water. It's not a problem for them. <laughs> so I, I feel for the older audiologists that are sticking to it, sticking with it, and are, but ha are having to learn about technology every time it comes around the corner. So, so this is, you know, so the detractors are going back and forth. Do you hear it? Probably not. See, and that is a technology that's in my microphone and technology that's in my cochlear implants. It blocks that sound over there because it knows that I'm just focusing on what we have here today. So that is cool. And, um, so, you know, the audiologists today, they do counseling. They have to keep up with the technology, what it's called, how it works, how to explain it to their patients. <laughs> so, balance, they work a lot with balance now. That used to be on the table with, the, with your primary care doctor, not with the audiologist. Now the audiologists work a lot with balance issues. Um, you know, when they were working with me, with um, hearing aids, they realized that when a sound got really sharp or really loud, it would throw me off and I'd be on the ground. So that was, that was important for them to know. So my hearing aids blocked those really loud sounds and the sharp ones especially. They just programmed the hearing aid to do that and so I was safe. <laughs> And I, I prefer to be safe than on the ground. <laughs> so with my cochlear implants, they shut off part of my array so that, you know, they tested it a little bit. And of course I was going down on the desk, on the audiologist's desk and she said, okay, okay, I got it. <laughs> so, so she really shut off part of the array so that um, loud sounds or sharp sounds would not throw me down. And that's, that's incredible technology that we didn't have that before. And if we, back in the day, if we didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to wear hearing aids at all because, you know, it would have been better to be deaf than to be on the ground and fainting due to very loud, sharp sounds. So the hearing aids today can protect people who have that syndrome, and I, I don't know what it's called, but it's very uncomfortable. So when loud sounds happen around me, I don't react because my cochlear implant blocks it. So for instance, the fire alarm, if that goes off, I might hear it, but I'm not quite sure. I have to look around the room and I don't see anything flashing. They didn't put flashers on <laughs> our fire alarms. so. Um, I have to have a system that will pick up that sound and send some vibrations to my bed. So then I know, okay, <laughs> the fire alarm's going off. I got to get the heck out of here. So, you know, those are all parts of technology that are unbelievable, that keep us safe. And, um, and this is, you know, Alexa's talking in the background. I don't even know if you hear that. But my microphone has already blocked it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and I know I need to go take some medication, so I'm going to stop here. 
There are also conditions in which the person becomes emotional due to certain sounds or their overwhelmed with sounds and there's also help for that as well because then they were able to calculate you know how much sound you know what is the volume this person can tolerate so that is another condition so there are so many things that they are doing these days to help people be able to hear be able to function and you know not get overwhelmed so the technology today i'm just saying it is unbelievable and we are the beneficiaries of all of that um and if you know i i feel for the ideologists i always send a, a may is uh hearing month for uh let me see if i can find it here um may is better hearing month so i usually send uh, uh, a happy email to my first audiologist her name is karen and i see her once in a while at church because she belongs to my my church so i see her and uh, the other day she was with her mom uh, so kind of cute but she was the one who had to really um put one and one to together to figure out how I was going to use hearing aids without getting overwhelmed by loud sounds. She had to figure out, okay, since I had sudden hearing loss, that was going to go up and down. So how she was going to work that into her schedule. Uh, so, you know, she had to figure all this out and counsel me in terms of people who were rejecting me or didn't want to interact with me because of the hearing loss. So. It was some of that in all of that that she had to work in to uh, a plan because my hearing loss was pretty new. It was sudden. So people were not used to me not hearing. So that was uh, something that I had to get used to. At work, it wasn't a problem. People were very, um, they were very gentle about it. They were very caring. So that wasn't an issue. Um, but in my own household, <laughs> it was a bit, a bit bucky. <laughs> so, so and, and part of it was me uh, telling them what was going on with my hearing because it, it just came all of a sudden. So they were like, what the heck? Why doesn't Lisa hear us? So that was me having to really say it verbally and say, hey, you know, I have sudden hearing loss. It just came all of a sudden. Yes, you do not know me with hearing loss, uh, but it's here and it's here to stay. So we're working on it. You know, I have behind the ear. No, I had in the ear hearing aids to start with, but I outgrew those pretty quickly. So we had to go to behind the ear hearing aids, which would give me a few more tools for the audiologist to work on. So folks, that is, you know, one of these days, I'm gonna talk about, you know, the history, the details of the history of, of hearing aids and hearing loss. And you all probably know some of this if, if you have hearing loss and how this started. You remember those horns that they used to put up to their ears? And, you know, I think some of you might have rem remembered, you know, your grandparents maybe wearing a box. My grandfather wore a box for a little while. He had some special hearing aids. He was going deaf pretty quickly. Uh, so he wore a box initially and then that went away. And then he was wearing behind the ear hearing aids, which were pretty big back then. Uh, but he heard pretty well with the, with the hearing aids he had. Um, and of course that progressed to smaller because his hearing aids were pretty bulky <laughs> behind the ear but then they got a little bit smaller and sharper and, and a better product so but you know we i can't tell you what's going to happen in the next five years because there's so much research going on for um hearing aids now for cochlear implants, the big project that they have going on is that they want to eliminate the behind the ear piece. And they want it completely internal 
uh, under the underneath the skin for us, and no outside instrument. Uh, I don't know how they're going to do that. <laughs> Scientifically, scientifically, I can't figure that one out. But they are testing right now. Um, and they're going to put the cochlear implant, hopefully, completely internal underneath the skin. Now, the problem with that is battery, battery life. You know, right now, we, we get the apparatus underneath our skin. We don't have to worry about any of that forever and ever. We don't. It, that lasts... A lifetime unless there's an incident like I had <laughs> that we had to change it but um, that's what they want to do uh, so Mayo Clinic right now is testing and um, we'll, we'll see how it goes but that's the progress they want to make with cochlear implants now cochlear implants we used to wear we used to wear you know a box if, if we couldn't hear well enough uh, we still use, you know, our mini mix, and that is, you know, from our T coils that connects with the um, with the mini mix. So the T coil is not going to go away. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> it's a cheap product that really can do a lot. So, um, and Bluetooth is is already part of the cochlear. Uh, processor and we can hear other things you know we can stream a lot of things um still things are expensive in all of this i don't i'm not sure where it got cut off but anyway i wanted to talk about abilities expo and abilities expo is for everyone uh for any kind of disability uh it is around the united states not in every state so i will leave the link down below so you can look at where it's coming next and see if you would like to attend whether you fly over there drive over there walk over there <laughs> and and just have a good time uh, they have conferences on traveling and all kinds of talks with sign language and uh, captioning so i think there's some uh, they're putting in some more vendors you know for people with hearing loss and because a lot of it was about people with mobility issues, but they're trying to put it in uh, with more variety. So I will certainly, I'm inviting you to the uh, Abilities Expo. It is free to sign up to go to the Expo. It's completely free. And then, of course, food and, and lunch is on your own. So, uh, but it's fun. It's fun to meet new people and I will be, you know, filming a little bit of what I'm doing, and uh, it'll be fun. Uh, and I will show some of those cuts, some of those short videos uh, here with you. So, Abilities Expo, don't forget, look at all the technology that's coming up, that's happening uh, for you and me, people who have worked hard and uh, have put in new ideas for technology to work better, more efficient, and for us to have fun and be able to work better in life. All right, I'll see you. Uh, if you wanna, uh, where, where is it down there? I see it down there. I think I see in the corner there. If you wanna <laughs> press that like button, that would be awesome. And uh, some new videos will be showing up. That would be awesome if you'd like to see another video and I will see you over in those videos.